All right, today we're doing the bush hog start to finish video. That's the material we're going to use to do it with. Take a good hard look at her. That's the last time she's ever going to look like that. All righty, guys. So this is what we have. This was a spool that they kept fiber optic conduit on. The orange conduit you see them run on the side of the roads. They used Dirt Perfect's lot as a staging area when they ran the fiber optic to the county. And they left several of these things behind. Uh, they're really great for a lot of things. I mean, it's good steel and it's got a cool radius to it. This part was sitting down on the gravel. You can see there's several spots like this. This, it's all ballooned up, had water in it, froze up. It's not in the best of shape, good to scrap, but uh, this is still good to use. So we're gonna cut some of these up, put them on the bush hog to reinforce a few areas. We're gonna get this puppy all painted up so it matches, because who doesn't like a matching set? And then, um, you know, we'll go from there. I'm not gonna bore you with too much of the cutting. I'll uh, tease you with a little bit of uh, rough fitting and then we're probably just gonna go ahead and jump straight to fabbing up at perfect shop so catch you in a little bit oh, a little pieces cut and everything and then i'm i'm just gonna take that second half that I didn't use with me, so I got the extra scrap steel. What do you say, doggo? What do you say? He's a good girl. So we'll get that loaded up in the truck. We're gonna use the old uh, GMC. Step one, let's get this bad boy started. All right, step one, let's get the battery pack. All right, I got a few random straps on there. This isn't the best situation. A trailer would be better or an actual truck. Like a big truck would be better, but this will work. It'll keep them from sliding out the back. I got something around the PTO shaft so the PTO shaft doesn't fall off. And then I got my pieces of steel all laying here. So let's head over to Mike's shop and see if we can get this thing all welded up. We'll go from there. <laughs> oh, that's just terrible. Here's all the pieces that we uh, pre-cut over at the house, laying out on the ground. Let's get them on there.
All right, so here's the back piece on there. Took a whole lot of C-clamping and moving and welding, but eventually we got it how we wanted it. Looks good. Next thing is we're gonna move on to the sides, those little radius pieces. We'll go ahead and set this on here. We'll take the Sharpie. We will mark where those legs come down, grind that paint off. We'll get these things welded on. All right, so same thing on the other side. Set this radius piece on here, get it all welded up. So I'll go ahead and make a disclaimer now. I'm not a welder, I have no skill as a welder. I don't claim to be a welder. And I make this joke a lot, but my skill set, or my skill level as a welder is, I'm a guy who knows a guy who has a welder and he lets me use it from time to time. But really, all in all, everything turned out okay. The biggest problem I had was just bad prep work on this end. I had a pretty big gap here and it took me a little bit to get it built up. But really, everything else turned out all right. They're not the prettiest, but time will tell if uh, if they're strong enough to hold up. See if we got good enough penetration. <laughs> okay, all right. So the next piece is this little arch on the back. I'm just kind of marking it so I can get it cleaned up good enough to get it welded on there. And we'll keep on moving. Last little thing we have is this piece of number four rebar we bent at a 90, just to act like a cross brace. We'll get that welded on there and we'll be well on our way. All right, so there it is. Oh, I ran into something with the tripod. Sorry about that. So here it is. You can see it. No, you don't get to see my welds up close. I'm just gonna tell you, they look awful. I'm not a welder, never claimed to be a welder. I may have done it in the voiceover already, but in case you missed it, uh, I just know a guy who has a welder, and I try my best, so that's what we're doing. A guy trying. All right, I'm going to uh, flap wheel those pieces I just put on, hit it with some black spray paint. I have some actual implement paint at the barn, but before we put the implement paint on and get it looking somewhat nice, uh, I'd like to actually try it out. So let's get that flap wheeled, we'll get it in the truck, and uh, we'll see if this thing does what I want it to do, and I'll explain what I want it to do. All right. All right, so we made it back here. And it's not sketchy, it's fine. We just backed up to this ditch. We'll get these ratchet straps undone and uh, we'll get this thing off. I really am anxious to get this in the woods and see if it does what I want it to do. shirts and ash tree but you can see hand for comparison but it's so dang tall if I normally take the bush hog I've either got to run over the bush hog bend it down and it'll cut it it'll cut something this thickness but I either have to run over it or back over it to bend it and it's a pain in the butt but with this the whole purpose is we'll line that up right in here 
And it should cut that right off the bottom, lay it down on the ground. And then we can just run over the rest of the way with the bush hog and let it lay on the ground to rock. So, let's hop on in a really dangerous spot. Try. All right, so this top piece is to kind of push the tree away from the tractor and keep it from bonding on the blade. The blade itself, the tip of it is about a half inch in from where that curved piece is that we put on the bottom. So it makes it closer to the edge. The whole idea, like I said, is so you don't have to drive over the tree to cut it down. We're looking for one to two inch trees, and you'll see in these upcoming videos, I've got a lot of one to two inch trees. cuts at the actual diameter of the tree instead of trying to cut it kind of long ways like when you run over it you're cutting it on a bend you know what I mean so this way you're cutting just the diameter of the tree so that's no problem for that tractor and that's handy so we'll go through the woods do a little bit more cutting put just different spots tractors rolling away that's fine that's fine yeah so it it really worked pretty well I'm pretty dang happy with the way it turned out and the performance so far I mean time will be the, the ultimate test but the whole goal like I said was to keep from having to run over the trees to cut it down there's nothing I can do on the end of the bush hog that's gonna change the amount of horsepower coming out of that PTO the PTO on that 755 is, a, is rated at 15 horsepower there's nothing I can do to change the horsepower coming out of that but this makes it a little bit more effective use of that horsepower instead of having to cut long ways through a bend by running over the tree you're just cutting through the actual diameter of the tree itself. Now I've got a lot of this scrub brush, a lot of these one and two inch trees on this property. Um, and I've been trying to clean it up forever and going around running over with, with the bush hog is fine, but then you always end up with stuff jammed up underneath the tractor and the cables and the linkages. And you can go around with the chainsaw and that kind of thing too. But this is just gonna be a really quick, effective way of doing it. I'm super, super excited with the way it turned out. Um, we'll run through several trees here so you can kind of get a few more shots of it working. And then we'll take it back to the barn, get it painted up real fast. I'm not going to show you painting it. I'm just going to show the finished product, one more final review and thought on it, and uh, a contest coming up for this, which uh, I think will be a lot of fun. So stay tuned. All right, here she is. Not too bad, we'll step back. Kinda nice, makes you wanna paint the tractor at this point. But, 
Just did the coal miner special on the paint. We didn't really put a lot of prep work into it. Just cleaned it off with some alcohol and got all the grease and stuff off there. And then we just rolled that on. Need another coat of paint. You still see orange showing through in a couple of places, but you know what? If a bush hog's gonna get wore down, I'm not really that worried about it. I'm pretty happy the way it looks now. We'll address a couple things right off the bat. No, I didn't fix this wheel. And I'll tell you why. These right here, they're bent. So it doesn't rotate that way anymore. Um, really all that does is just keep the blades from eating the ditch or eating the dirt whenever I cross the ditch. Uh, and this one was kind of bent the opposite way, so it acted like a disc whenever I ran it. So with just a, and I'll go, with just a one wheel on there, we don't have that problem. And it's not really worth fixing for me. That's not something I'm too concerned about. But uh, yeah, I think it turned out really, really well. I cannot wait. Uh, cannot wait to get this thing out and use it some more. And with the uh, sky saw, it's not on there now. I don't know what I'm pointing at. But with the um, sky saw attachment up in the bucket, check out this link if you haven't. With the sky saw attachment in the bucket, I think we'll have a pretty good little clearing combination just for property maintenance. I'm excited about it. So here's the thing I was going to talk about, the contest that I want to do. Uh, obviously, I just painted over the decals that were on here. I think it was a king cutter or something like that. We need a name for this thing, and we're going to get a vinyl decal printed out, cut out. Let's go go right down that side. And you guys... So, this is where you guys get to come in. You guys get to name this thing, all right? It's going to be a pretty simple process. Just leave it in the comment what you think it should be. Something funny, something punny, something clever. Something that makes me smile and laugh every time I get on this daggum thing. That's what I'm looking for. Um, I'm not going to use a random comment generator finder selector tool thingamajiggy. I'm just going to pick the one out I like the most. I'll announce it on one of the videos. We'll get it cut out in vinyl, put down the side of the thing, and that's going to be awesome. I think it'll be a fun little thing for us to do together. Um, a couple of you guys asked about the Greater Project. If you haven't seen that, check it out here. Uh, <laughs> sorry, neighbors are talking over there. I'm sure I look crazy just carrying the camera around. But uh, it's where you last saw it. I'm still in the process of getting all the parts in. Once I get all the parts in, then I'll get it wrapped up. It'll probably be late February, to be honest. I just kind of want to drag it to Mike's, get it all knocked out, a one and done kind of thing, like I did with the bush hog. So that's where that's at. As always, thanks for watching. Like, share, and comment. Would you guys do a great job of that already? And uh, I'm getting funny looks from the neighbors, so I'm going to go ahead and cut this off.